guys, I'm just touching base here on a Friday evening and I really just finished my first week of consulting since I've been back uh, from New Zealand and during this week I've had time to touch base with a lot of different clients and also check in with what they're feeling and really what I'm finding is that there you know this is a, a tremendously tremendously difficult situation for a lot of people and why is that and I, I think one of the reasons is that that there already has been a lot of social isolation for people who've been dealing with uh, environmentally acquired illnesses such as CIRS and who have already been housebound for many years and now to have this situation where um, where social isolation is being enforced um, can be quite triggering in a sense and I'm going to talk a little bit today about how we can navigate the situation in a way that's tempered and that's not just ignoring the realities of the situation but also not getting so panicked and um, and ramped up by it that it can actually have a negative effect on, on your health and those around you. So a couple of things I wanted to say to start with. Well firstly there's one small correction from my last video where I, I stated that um, the COVID-19 virus appears to stay on surfaces for up to two weeks. The more recent research I've looked at suggests that perhaps 72 hours or so is more like the lifeline of this um, this virus on most common surfaces. So perhaps two weeks was a was an over exaggeration so I just wanted to take any panic out of it for those who heard that particular statistic. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is that we intend to continue working throughout this whole period and if it came to the fact that go the, the government decided to shut down most businesses um, then we will continue to work from home and uh, and do phone and Skype and Zoom consultations and just a quick word on that again um, that if you know if anyone's concerned about coming in, the, the simple solution is, is to, to switch your consultation over to, to phone or Skype or Zoom um, because we can then achieve most of the goals of, of a medical consultation without um, needing to risk any kind of exposure. However, if it's medically necessary, we are still doing face-to-face -face consultations for the foreseeable future. Um, do recommend if you're feeling at all unwell well, um, particularly in the way of having a fever or a cough or shortness of breath, etc., that you don't come in face to face and you have a, a, a Skype or phone appointment and look at getting tested for this illness. So luckily we have not had any of our patients who have tested positive for this uh, virus as yet to the best of our knowledge and so that that's um, a real positive. Now a couple of other things that I wanted to touch on and I guess the first big point and I guess one of the major things I wanted to talk about during during this um, Facebook live session is is about the middle way and finding a middle way emotionally during this outbreak and I think there is a couple of extremes of reactions and I'm sure almost everyone has in, encountered people who have been in one or other of the extremes of reaction to this and and so one extreme is where people essentially don't buy into it whatsoever and just say I'm not buying into this hysteria this is just the flu that goes around every year this is a hoax etc and sometimes these people can even or people who are in that mind state can even shame people who are feeling fear and saying look those you know, people who are um, who are getting into fear are just not of a high enough vibration, or whatever it might be, and I think that that's really um, an extreme way of reacting at this point because there certainly, you know, there certainly is a significant viral illness which is which has gone around most of the countries of the world, and um, you know, although we're talking about something like a, a 1 to 3 percent death rate rather than than some other viruses which have been much higher I mean it's still somewhat of a, a cause for concern so what we don't want to do is shame people who are getting into fear because you know at one level this is a real threat to to survival or it certainly can be interpreted like that for by people's psyches and those who have had a lot of trauma can easily get get triggered 
and start getting into a lot of fear. And I just wanted to say about that, that if you're getting into a lot of fear, firstly, that's totally okay. Um, and really, I think just working with your own system and, you know, giving yourself a lot of reassurance and, you know, telling yourself that you've got this and you know what you're doing here. And, and that leads me on to the next bit is that there are a lot of things that can be done proactively to work on your immune system and um, to, to lower chances of having any kind of severe illness. Now, none of these have been subject to clinical trials and so on, and I doubt they will be able to be tested in that way. However, based on the empiric research and data on these, we believe that they would uh, lower any chances of severe illness. So I talked about these on the last Facebook Live, and I'll briefly me mention them again. The first is vitamin C, orally, uh, up to around four to five grams a day. Secondly is vitamins A and D, which are generally very immune boosting. Uh, and then we have hermal formulas, particularly astragalus, licorice, and uh, calendula are the base of, of, of herbal formulas at the moment. And there's various others which appear to be specific in the situation, um, such as kudzu, um, which seems to uh, help with certain types of viral adherence. So there are various herbs that appear to be useful just for general immune support. I'm not saying that there's specific treatments for any particular conditions. Uh, so using those things can be very, very helpful. And then maintaining relative self-isolation is very important. Um, so if you can generally um, reduce the amount of people that you're getting in contact with. That's that that's very good. And you know, hand washing is very important. Avoiding handshakes and generally, you know, avoiding touching doorknobs and and other um, areas where many many people will have touched is is quite useful, especially if you can use your elbow. I still think having some degree of social contact with your close family and close friends is important. Um, however, you may care to just slowly move more towards, you know, socializing at home or in a, in a very quiet, you know, in, in some kind of um, environment that where there's a, not a lot of people coming and going, basically. And I, I think that's still important for people's mental health to keep some form of social life going. Um, you know, whether that be online. I mean, online's never really a substitute for face-to-face. And my feeling is, you know, a couple of close friends and, um, and, and maintaining some contact with them is, is, is quite a healthy thing to be doing during this time. And that's really, that's still, still really a very limited amount of person-to-person -person contact. And really, the problems start when you start getting in contact with, you know, tens or hundreds of people um, uh, during the week. And, you know, the, the amount of potential for passing this virus on between asymptomatic carriers then starts to become very, very high. So there are definitely things that can be done proactively. There do also appear to be some effective treatments and some of these are being um, trialed now in Australia, such as the Royal Brisbane Hospital, who are testing out um, either chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, which appears to be extremely effective, um, particularly if added to the antibiotic azithromycin. And then secondly, there's, a, there's actually a HIV medication called remdesivir, which appears to have a lot of potential as well. I'm also hoping that a clinical trial on nitazoxanide uh, will occur in Australia because that appears to also have a lot of promise for treatment um, if this condition, if you were to actually contract this condition. So it's not all hopeless in the case of this virus. There are a whole bunch of things that you can do. And you know, while staying home and so on, um, there are uh, there's also a number of things you can you can do to just continue working on your health in the meantime and educating yourself. Uh, some people are finding that spending time doing online courses is very valuable, and really, for I guess for a lot of people who've been chronically ill, um, there's not a huge change because they're already had a very very limited. Um, range of activities. However, just having this background hysteria going on, you know, has added another level of triggering. And I just wanted to reassure people that um, really, you know, we're going to get through this. And if we just do all the right things, 
Um, you know, as I said, with regard to self-isolation, with regard to supporting your immune system, um, it's really, um, this is just uh, a, you could say, a ramped up version of every other time when, when flus and so on are actually um, are, are, are out there and, and they, you know, even the seasonal influenza does cause a certain amount of deaths and the same pattern seems to be there that those who are more elderly and, um, and, and, and those who have pre-existing medical conditions are, are more at risk. Um, so for the average person, you know, particularly young people, but even those in, in sort of middle age, the risk of having a very serious complication is probably fairly low. And it, it generally happens when someone has a massive inflammatory response to the virus. And really that's when their system is unable to mount a proper immune, you know, a proper acquired immune response. In a sense, it's similar to what occurs in CIRS, that one is, isn't able to mount a proper acquired immune response against biotoxins. Well, in this case, it's against the viral antigen. And it appears that the more healthy you can be in many ways, including um, keeping up the levels of some of these immune nutrients, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to mount a proper acquired immune response against this. So, you know, I also wanted to mention the other extreme of getting, you know, of merging with the fear, if you like, and merging with the hysteria as it's being presented by the mainstream media is, is another extreme we don't want to go to as well. Um, because, you know, that can really cause a lot of internal panic. And when you start getting a lot of internal panic, uh, your limbic system starts to activate again and that can create a certain degree of inflammation. So I think it's, it's important not to ignore what's going on and to be sufficiently cautious to, um, to be performing some actions, but also to be giving yourself a lot of reassurance that we are gonna get through this, that you know, there is another side to this. And, uh, and there's a lot of personal growth in this for everyone if we can just hang in there over these next couple of weeks and months, even though they are difficult. All right. So I wanted to reach out to you guys. If you had any um, any thoughts you wanted to share about how you have been feeling during this period of outbreak, I'd love if you would chime in underneath this video and share your thoughts. Also, how have you been going treading the middle path between hysteria and um, blissful ignorance, if you like? And have people been able to find a uh, a, a middle road where they're sufficiently concerned, um, however, still not getting so hysterical that you know that you're losing your daily routine and your daily self care. Have you been able to keep up your self care? Think you know simple things such as exercise, simple things such as you know reading or meditation or whatever brings you calm. Been able to keep with your your general health regime. And um, are there things that may help you during this period? So for instance, keeping in touch with a health practitioner, um, having a practitioner you can work with over Skype or phone, particularly dealing with the emotional side of this current situation um, can be an extremely good idea. Um, and if there's anything we as a clinic or I as an individual can do to help, um, I'm more than happy to, to do so. So I look forward to continuing this conversation below and my very well wishes to everyone. Bye for now.